Hey, Evan Reese here. In the past two videos, we've covered some of the basic things you can do with input fields in Onshape, like math, how to handle units, rounding, min, and max functions, and things like that. Um, and in this video, we're going to get into Boolean logic. As a reminder, anywhere that you're typing in a feature in Onshape is really a little window into feature script itself. And so there's a lot of power that we can build in using uh, Booleans. So a Boolean is a true-false statement. It's a yes-no. It's on-off. It's a one or a zero. It's like a binary statement. And we can then combine these together to create more complicated trains of logic and then use those in an if-then type of statement to build a lot more logic and smarts into our models, which if you're doing parametric CAD and you're bothering to use Onshape to do that, um, building logic into the model is kind of the point. So stick with me and you'll be able to pick these new skills up. All right, in the last video, you saw us make this hex stock that cannot exceed a maximum length because it doesn't come in a greater than the maximum length. So we limited this so that if you type in nine feet, it will just give you an eight foot bar anyway. Um, and that's fine. That's an okay workaround. Um, but what if we wanted this to be even more obvious when you have uh, violated the limit? I would really hate for somebody on my team to think they have a nine foot stock and they didn't check it uh, and then later find out that it, they didn't have that. So here's another just kind of contrived example for the purposes of education. Um, I've got this shaft stock and I am just pretending that the maximum lengths for these various sizes that are configured um, are these values here. So eight inches, eight inches, 12 inches, 16 inches. And I've got that configuring this variable um, as well. And then I've got a length input where I can put any number that I want. This is a configuration variable. Um, when I create a configuration variable here, I do have the option to put in a min and max, but this is not configurable. So if I have different minimums and maximums, uh, this is one way you might handle that situation. All right, so we want to, um, interrogate this model and ask a few questions. And to do that, we can use Booleans. So let me roll to here and get started. I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to set that variable to any because we're not creating a length angle or number. We're going to result in a true or false. Um, and first thing I want to check is, are we below the maximum? So is below max is the name of my variable. And then I can just say length is less than or equal to um, max. Uh, equal to because I, you know, I, I want to be able to, I can use 12 inches of a 12 inch bar. You can also just use less than, and it would be non-inclusive. Um, all right. So yes, this is, is below max. And you see when I click away, it gives me a true because we are below the max of 12. If I change this to something that has a different max, our variable changes to false. Or if I bring this up to exceed the max that I have established, uh, like 13 inches, um, Oh, the max is 16. So let's say 18 inches. Yeah, that's going to be false. So that's working. That's our first Boolean. Um, if we wanted to check some other stuff, we can totally do that. I'm going to add some other examples in here just to kind of be a little bit contrived. So um, to show you some of what is possible. So one thing we could check is if it's a whole number. Maybe we only want to have stock that is to the nearest rounded to the nearest inch or something like that. We don't want to allow anything else. So uh, I'm going to say is whole number. Go back again to any. If I if I put in a like a boolean here, like if I if I say length is greater than zero or, or something like that, it's going to fail. It'll say you can't use a boolean as a length. So I'm going to come over to any to do this. Um, and there's actually a function for this called is integer. Is integer length. And right now it's going to say it's not, um, even though I have 18 inches here. And that um, goes back to the units talk in uh, the first part here. So, um, and some of the rounding in the second part. So if I do length divided by inch, it might work. Uh, yes, that's true. But this is going to be unstable because really all of the units in Onshape are in meters. Um, otherwise, you know, you might run into a weird situation where like, uh, you know, 25.4 millimeters doesn't equal one inch and it, it really should always. So, um, because of that, that means that the number that comes out of here, um, might have, uh, you know, like way out to the right, eight decimal points out might have like a one or a four, you know, it'll mess us up. So what I'm going to do is just round this to, uh, you know, some number of decimal points that's a little closer, and I think it'll be close enough for our purposes. So round to precision is the function I'm using. Uh, the first argument, and I covered this in video two, uh, the first argument is the thing to round. 
And the second argument is how many decimal places. So I'm just going to round that to six. Um, and actually, I might want to use this again. So I'm going to cut that out, and I'm going to say um, length as number. I'm just declaring a new variable here, and I'll put that there. Um, and this can be a number. OK. So there we go. We've got length as number here with all of our rounding and all of that business. So now we can check, is this a whole number? And that's giving us false until we hit 19. Um, and I suppose if I probably, if I did 18.0000001, it'll still, it'll still say true because we rounded it back only to, you know, this many decimal places. Um, all right, so what else might we do? We could use a Boolean to check whether or not uh, this is an even or odd number. So let's say um, is even. And to do that, I'm going to say uh, length as number modulo 2 equals equals 0. So this is, this is crazy. Let me just explain what's going on here. Uh, first, we have length as number, which is just 18 instead of 18 inches. Um, and then the modulo operator, which is another operator like your times or divide or, or something like that. It's a math operator. And what it does is it does division by whatever is on the right and then tells the, the remainder instead of the result. So um, any even number divided by 2 uh, has no remainder. It's All even numbers are divisible by 2 and still result in the whole number. But anything that is not even... Uh, will not result in zero. So this is where I'm checking equality. In the same way that I had greater than, this is how I check if things are equal, is two equal signs. Um, so that's an is even function. Um, and so you can see it, it turns false even for the number 19, even though it is a whole number, that's true here. It's going to give us false, uh, false there. So if I wanted to make is odd, let's figure that out. It's a little more complicated, um, but we already have everything we need right here. So um, for one, we want to know is even, and we want, I'm going to put an exclamation point in front of that, and that's going to basically just invert it. So it's going to say is not even. Uh, so exclamation point is not. Um, and likewise with the, the equal sign, if I want to say is not equal, I do exclamation equal, and that's the operator for not equal. So um, here we go. So the one thing we want to ask is, is this not even? And that's good, but it uh, will still say, say that um, a decimal number is odd, which is not correct. So we're going to combine these two together to figure out whether the number is odd. Um, and so to, to combine Booleans, we can actually uh, use some other operators like this to combine them. So two ampersands is our and operator and two pipes, which is uh, I'm holding shift and pressing the backslash key, uh, will give us pipes. This is our or operator. So if I have uh, two statements here and I have an or operator, only one of them has to be true for it to result in true. And if I have my and operator, they both have to be true for it to result in a true. So um, is whole number is the other thing. So as long as it is a whole number and is not odd, uh, or is not even, then it, then it will be odd. So let's try 21. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, so these should always be, not always inverted. See, like a, now a decimal number is neither even nor odd. OK, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's get back to the example. Um, I'm just going to roll all of these up into one more, just to show you, again, how we can stack them together. Um, meets all criteria is going to be um, is below max and is odd, let's say. Uh, so we only want odd numbers that are below the maximum here in our example. Um, so in order to use these, we, you know, we have all this like we've checked things, but how do we actually implement that? Um, that's where our ternary statement comes in. That's an if then statement. So um, I'm going to override the variable called length. Um, let me just show you what I mean. The, the configuration itself is creating a configuration variable, and you can see the name of the variable here, length. Um, and if I create a new variable with that same name um, and make it equal to 2 inches, for example, and I roll to the end here, now everything downstream of this is going to use 2 inches instead of whatever I put here. 
Uh, so you can overwrite them. Another way to do this might be to call this the target length and then call this like length, you know, just to kind of differentiate the two. Um, but I'm just gonna do it this way and override. So let's get into our if then statement, our ternary statement. The, the structure of these is we have a Boolean question mark. So it's kind of like true, false. And then if true goes here, colon, if false goes here. Uh, all right, but these are obviously not actual variables right now. This is just kind of the structure. So uh, a Boolean, ask it a question, give it a question mark. And then if it's true, do this. If it's false, do that. Um, so let's do one for real. We want to say if uh, like meets all criteria, um, if it's true, we'll just use the length. And if it doesn't meet all the criteria, um, we could set it to equal the max, which is kind of what we got from our max function in the last video. But in this case, I want to make it super duper obvious that we have violated some of the logic that we set up. So in this case, I'm going to force the extrude feature to fail by just feeding it zero inches. Uh, you can't extrude at zero inches. Um, so that's great. If I go to a, a, let's see, this number is above the max. So like, let's do 15. 15 works because it meets the criteria. It is um, odd and it is below the max. These are both true. And that's what we used in our meet all criteria uh, Boolean. Whereas 14 inches is gonna fail because it's not odd. Um, and that's cool. And just to show a little more of what you can do here, we can use another ternary function to create a kind of a status report if you wanna give more messages, you know, somebody's gonna see that that fails and begin to interrogate the model, but they may not totally understand what's going on here. This is admittedly, hopefully, um, more convoluted than yours has to be, but you're, it could be less. I mean, you might, you can really stack these things together. There's no limit. So let's um, create a little bit more user friendliness to this model. Uh, I'm gonna go back again to any, and we'll say status. And now we're gonna do another ternary, meets all criteria, question mark. And then instead of anything else, we're just gonna have, I'm gonna put empty strings here. So the quotation marks um, denote that I have a string. And if it's all good, I'm actually just gonna pull up, uh, pull up my, my emojis here and put a check. There we go. And then here, if it's bad, I'm gonna put an X. Uh, and let's see how that's going. So if it meets the criteria, should be at 15. Right, we've got a green check and an extrude, and you can add a whole string of text to this, say like does not meet criteria, or something like that. And then when that fails, you can mouse over it and read the whole message. Um, yeah, so that's one way that you can use Booleans, but it gets even deeper. So I wanna show you a bit more, um, a bit more of what you can do with Booleans. And where it really gets powerful is to realize that Booleans are all over your features, not just places you can type. Uh, this is a Boolean, this is a Boolean. All of the checkboxes, opposite arrow directions, and any, any of these things in your feature are a Boolean. And you can right click them and say convert to expression. And now you can see this is false if I go true it will be the same as if I clicked that button, but we can drive it with logic instead. So one example would be like, uh, here, here, let me show you. Use my cube feature um, to just drop some geometry out there real quick. And then um, a move face on this face, and I'm gonna move it by a variable called, oops, called distance or dist. Um, cool. So now if I, change if i set this to final i can i can do this but if i go negative it's going to fail because it doesn't accept negative numbers um and honestly i i don't think there's any like underlying reason why it couldn't and i think it should um so maybe that's an update we'll get in the future but for now it doesn't accept negative numbers we'd have to flip the direction and use a positive number so we can use our um, new boolean logic powers to do that uh, let me show you. First, we will set this to, we'll use an absolute function for our distance. And then we'll convert this to an expression. And we can say, is distance greater than zero? 
Um, oh, let's see. Is distance less than zero? How about that? All right, cool. So it will flip the direction when our variable goes negative. Um, and we can just blow right past that zero point because we have conf uh, made the flip direction driven by logic instead of driven by clicks. So there's a lot of things in here that you can drive by logic instead of clicks. And that's really powerful. I'm getting attacked by a mosquito. Hang on. Oh, I got it. Okay. All right. Just uh, one more example here to really drive the point home. Um, another thing that you can convert to expression is uh, sketch text. So if I'm in this sketch and I right click this uh, edit text here, I can right click and convert. Yeah, it's, it's already converted. So if I convert to you know, text, that's fine. I can convert to expression. Uh, I'm going to exit without making any changes because that messed up the equations, but let me show you what I've got in there. So edit sketch text or edit, uh, there we go. So width is, this is just a string. Uh, so this just says width is, and then this is my, um, concatenation. So this will help me like put strings together. And then the state is, uh, using some, some Boolean logic to change this word. And then I'm concatenating height. So what we get here is if, um, I change the width of it to be, there you go. I changed it and it says width is less than height and I can change it so that width is greater than height. And if I make it, uh, you know, I don't know, let's say 40 inches and I make this one 40 inches then it will say width is equal to height. So how did I do that? Let's get in here and look. I'm gonna drag this out so you can see the whole thing. This looks like a lot of business going on, but what I've really got is a nested ternary statement. So I'm saying, is width equal to the height? If it is, say equal to. If it's not equal to the height, then do this ternary statement, which is saying, if it's not equal to the height, then is it uh, greater than the height? And if so, say greater than, and if not, then less than. So this is how I'm getting sort of three different things out of a, a statement. I'm using to, a nested ternary statement to do that. All right, that does it for Booleans and if-then statements in uh, inside of features in Onshape. In the next video, we're going to cover containers. So things like maps and arrays. If you don't know what that means, see you in that next video. And if you do know what that means, maybe you're kind of excited. Um, but it's just going to take us a little bit farther behind the curtain to reveal that CAD is code. There is no difference. What, when you're doing a model, you're not really doing a model. You're creating code that does the model for you. Um, the, the sooner you can kind of blend those mindsets and realize that this is really what's going on um, when you're creating features, then it will unlock a lot more potential and a lot more um, capability for you as an Onshape user. So I will see you in that next video.